what's going on everyone how you doing today are you doing you doing well i hope that you are thank you as always for clicking on the video i appreciate you being here let's go ahead if you don't mind i mean you're here so i'm assuming you don't mind let's go ahead and listen to the first side of face the music by elo electric light orchestra released in 1975 this would be their one two three four fifth album this is the one coming right after el dorado which we have listened to as well so this is a nice sequence nice uh, moving on from where we last left off with ELO. Uh, El Dorado is a really good album, so I'm expecting this to be a pretty good album as well. <laughs> uh, just as some of the other albums we've covered before uh, thus far on the channel, this was on a poll I put out a while back uh, in which I said choose one and I listed five different albums. And you were really choosing the order of the albums I'd be going through. You weren't choosing one and that's the only one I would do. It's a little trick, but you get a treat in the end. So, <laughs> so I hope you enjoy that uh, and this. So the first side is going to include the songs Fire on High, Waterfall, Oh Evil Woman, and Night Rider. I know Evil Woman. That's, that's the only one that I know for a fact that I've heard. It's always possible that uh, I've heard some of the others, but as far as I know, I do not. But Evil Woman, yes, I do know that one. Even though I mentioned it before, but... I've heard that kind of like growing up. It was just one of those songs that was on the radio that I actually listened to. And I always thought that that was like, I don't know, like Earth, Wind, and Fire or someone. Listen, when I was younger, I really did not have any musical sense. I began to like actually like listen to music and understand music maybe like when I was, I don't know, starting maybe around 12 years old. And even then it started like really slowly. It wasn't until high school, college that I like got into music. So uh, anyways, yeah. I'm excited to listen to the album. I appreciate you guys being here. As you know, it'll be edited here on YouTube, but you can watch it on Patreon for free. You don't have to pay anything, sign up, or anything like that. Just click the link down below. It's right there for you. I'm giving you the keys to the kingdom. Small kingdom as it is, but I got to give you the keys to the kingdom so you can watch it with the music if you so choose to. But if you just want to watch the abbreviated version, that's what's right here on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to probably stop every track. Uh, and, talk, and talk about it, not talk about it, but talk about it, um, unless I feel that, like, you know, it kind of leads perfectly into the next one, even still which I might want to stop it just to discuss it, and we can always back it up to let certain transitions flow, but yeah, let's go ahead and start with Fire on High, I got my coffee, hopefully you have your drink, your beverage, your food, your snack of choice, let's get into it, guys, this is ELO, Face the Music, Side 1. What an introduction to the album on here. Fire on High. So already we're getting like an overture and a huge amount of different styles that are being introduced here from the absolute menace of the intro. <laughs> it, it, the intro on here, the strings are downright dark and like just evil, just, just dark. Whereas El Dorado sometimes went into a more dreamy and hypnotic phase with its orchestra. This, at least in the introduction, it just turned turn straight Hail Satan. <laughs> it just went, it just was devilish there, which was really cool. It was cool to hear ELO do like a, a, a darker spin, you know? And, you know, looking at the name of the album, even the album cover, I don't know if this is a, a concept album or a thematic one, but, you know, face the music relating to death, perhaps accepting uh, the eventuality of death. You kind of have like, if, I, if I'm thinking about it, the intro is like dark, just as death is, but the music kind of lightens up as we go. Perhaps this is the acceptance of death. But even moving forward from that, then you had some uh, backwards vocals. I was, I have the lyrics here, and I see that they are backwards, so, you know. <laughs> I knew what was going on there. But it all comes to this very dark effect, and I think that's really cool because the lyrics there are saying, turn back. Turn back, turn back. 
That's, that's cool. That's a cool way to kind of set up your storytelling. And then we move into some lighter orchestra. We get this synthesizer line that repeats itself, just start sequencing. And then you get some like flamenco guitar that comes in. You get that big drum fill that comes in twice. And it has some phaser effect going on behind it. So it's almost like a Phil Collins moment. But there's something, something on the production side that's just kind of phasing it and changing it a little bit. But what a cool introduction into the beat and the groove that follows in which you get some long sustained guitar notes. Um, and it's all like really cool. This is just a cool overture introduction to the sound of the album, kind of getting you into the different, the different elements. I didn't pronounce the, so kind of getting you into the different elements uh, that I would assume we'll hear as we move further on into the album. But this was really cool. This was a nice instrumental, basically, introduction. And uh, those drums are gonna be played by Bev Bevan. And like I said, it was really cool just the way that they're produced on there. Um, the lyrics, like I said, there's not really too much. I see that there's some... I have to read this backwards. <laughs> uh, turn back, which is said four times. But time is not. The music is reversible. <laughs> okay, so time is not reversible, but the music is. So perhaps if you were to play this, or at least certain parts in, you know, reverse, you would hear, besides the message here, you might hear some other stuff too. Because it did sound like some of the strings were also um, played backwards. Speaking of which, at one point after the flamenco guitar, after, you know, all that stuff, you even have some kind of folk-like violin playing that's happening. Like, there's just a lot of styles that are just in this particular track. And then you have some um, very beautiful operatic-like vocals saying hallelujah, hallelujah. So you're getting kind of an interesting... Uh, perspective on death. At least that's what I'm thinking. Uh, you know, just taking it as it is. Let's go ahead and see if there's any specific information on this song that I would be, think would be interesting here. Uh, da, 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 the music is reversible, but time is not. Yep, I see that. Uh, it says, this inclusion was a joke by Jeff Lynne, who faced mild controversy from a Christian fundamentalist group accusing him of including backwards satanic messages on the track El Dorado. I remember reading about that. Uh, from their previous album of the same name. So <laughs> he's like, you guys thought that there was some sort of weird subliminal message in the last one? Well, there definitely is in this one. <laughs> Jeff Lynn is just trolling them. That's hilarious. <laughs> oh, man. Jeff Lynn later remarked that the entire concept of the song started with the idea of classical symphonic sound would collide with a rock and roll sound. And I mean, I think it comes together really nicely here. Uh, for all the different sections, it doesn't sound too mishmash. You know, overall, it transitions pretty well uh, between the two. The most stark contradiction and the most stark contrast being when that guitar comes in and then starts a whole new movement. But otherwise, it moves really nicely. So I'm not going to look it up to see if this album is specifically as a whole dealing with death, but I would imagine that at least this track is. <laughs> so let's go ahead and let the last like few seconds of this one play, and we are going to move into Waterfall. Don't go chasing them, though. is a track in which the strings, the orchestra, the symphony, and all of the uh, melodrama that's surrounding the tone of the track, you're just getting swept up in. This is a very sentimental kind of love ballad that, like I said, the strings are really like big. I'm really loving the introduction on this song though. The intro with that, I think, slide guitar, lap steel, one of the two, that alongside the quaint orchestra that was used right there, I think was a brilliant setup. I was really curious to hear where it went from there because it was a great introduction. And then we went into the rest of the song, which does sound nice. It's interesting that just in the first two tracks, we're getting a big contrast. Like the darkness of the intro of Fire and then moving into like the guitar and the solo and then now moving into like a big ballad. And next on the track, we have Evil Woman coming out. Oh, evil woman. Uh, <laughs> sorry, it's so catchy. And it's one of the few lines I can actually sing decently. <laughs> 
But otherwise, Waterfall is kind of like a, a, an overwhelming waterfall of feelings. Now, whether you feel it or you don't feel it, that's going to be dependent on you. Personally, I think it sounds good. I don't personally connect with it, even though I can easily acknowledge just how good it's produced and it comes together. It's very powerful. The singing is nice as well. That'd be like a good wedding song. That'd be like a good track to put on during a wedding or like maybe even in the after party. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm kind of getting something like that. But otherwise, it's pretty straightforward on this one. It's that intro, though. I, I really like the intro to Waterfall. That? Uh, it's just cool, like, because it's almost setting you up with this kind of soundtrack cinematic experience. Which, yes, in a sense, you do get as we move into the rest of the track. It just moves into a more pop rock direction as we move forward. But I really like that beginning. So now it's getting late for those who hesitate. Got no one but they don't understand it. No one hears the sound. It's like a waterfall. It's an illusion. Love is all. Waterfall. Love is what you are. Pulls you in, takes you down. It's a sad affair, but you know as you hold back the power there, without the friends and lovers, you can never go on living. Love, when it comes, it can be as overwhelming and as powerful as a waterfall. It'll sweep you in, pull you down, take you down. But you're all the better for it. You know, you can't control it, Sometimes you can't, you, uh, you can't control yourself when it comes to love. But it's better to have love and have lost it than to not have loved at all, is kind of what he's saying. Without the friends and lovers, you can never go on living. We all need a little love. Across the waterfall that's falling evermore down on you, cascading through the days and flowing on its way, that's how it has to be, just an illusion. Love is all a waterfall. Love is what you are. So yeah, I think it's not too much to look into with that. Love is a waterfall. It's going to take you and do with do with you what it will. <laughs> Anyways, let's let the last few seconds of this track play. And we will move into Evil Woman. I wasn't going to sing it that time. I wanted to. I held back. You made a fool of me. Okay, I know that Evil Woman is one of those tracks that has been played to death, everyone and their mamas heard it, I know. But taking that away, you gotta admit that this is a classic track. You have to say that, I mean, you don't have to, of course. But <laughs> to me, this is the perfect pop rock mixed with symphonic and orchestral elements song. This is like, this is like, I don't know, a little Beatles-esque except there's a little bit of a symphony in there. It's just really cool, like, how... This is a staple to me. That's great. This is... We've only heard three tracks on the album. But this is easily a high mark on the album. I think that this is, in particular, the perfect song. Um, the movement of the, all the catchiness of... Evil woman! I love the... <laughs> I like how just on the E of evil, we said... Evil. I just love that. It's just a cool movement, just vocally. It's a small thing, but yet the song's pretty catchy for it, you know? Like, that just shows how how strong the songwriting in this particular track is. Singing is great. I love the little piano solo that we get in the middle. I love how it wraps it all up. Um, you still get a little bit of that phaser effect as well. Very briefly, very briefly, for a tiny moment. I actually wish that that was kind of grown into something. But I like a little artistic touch that's thrown in there. Listen, this is a, a catchy, pop, rocky jam. Steely Dan in quality. Question. Do the Alan Parsons Project and ELO in any way have anything kind of in common? Because we're listening to Turn of a Friendly Card right now. And the orchestration the very finely produced production on the ends, the mixing, the mastering, the depth of the instruments, the symphonic touches, and yet moving into a more catchier, 
poppy direction. It's kind of traveling a similar path, of course, not necessarily, you know, I don't know if there's a relation or any sort of connection between them, but at least musically, there is a some, a some similarity there. Let's get into these lyrics, huh? You made a fool of me, but them broken dreams have got to end. Hey, woman, you got the blues because you ain't got no one else to use. <laughs> there's an open road that leads nowhere. So just make some miles between here and there. There's a hole in my head where the rain comes in. You took my body and played to win. Ha, ha. Woman, it's a crying shame, but you ain't got nobody else to blame. Evil woman. I'm, I'm sorry. I promise that's the last time I'll do it. But he's just saying, you got to go. You got no one else to use, and you're not using me no more. You made your bed, now lie in it. The door is open. Rolled in from another town, hit some goal too hot to settle down. But a fool and his money soon go separate ways. You found a fool lying in a daze. Ha ha, woman, what you gonna do? You destroyed all the virtues that the Lord gave you. It's so good that you're feeling pain, but you better get your face on board the very next train. Evil woman, how you done me wrong. Now you're trying to wail a different song. Funny how you broke me up. You made the wine. Now drink the cup. <laughs> That's a diss track if I ever heard it. <laughs> I came running every time you cried, thought I saw love smiling in your eyes. Ha, very nice to know you, that you ain't got no place left to go. She's had multiple chances. He came running every time she cried, but those chances are, he is flat out of that. He's done. <laughs> he said, it says that this song was written by Lynn in a matter of just a few minutes near the end of the studio sessions for this. That's interesting. Originally supposed to be a filler track to give the album a longer runtime, it quickly became a worldwide hit and released as a single only a month after the album's release. I don't want to record filler on purpose. <laughs> my cat's here now hitting all my stuff. Hey, baby, want to come over? You coming over? Okay, she's just going to eat. Okay, uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and move into the next track then. Which is going to be Knight Rider. Wasn't Knight Rider uh, David Hasselhoff's show? He was in, uh, uh, what's that car? A, a mo is a, a, it's a Model T. What was the car that he had? With, uh, what was the car's name? Albert? Ed? <laughs> I think people think I'm, <laughs> I'm trolling. It's, it's definitely Katie. All right, let's go ahead and move into uh, Knight Rider. Let's go. I think that texturally, this is kind of an interesting song we have here. So this kind of abandons some of the presets and the preconceptions we had in the previous tracks. And this kind of carves its own path in a way. I really like the sharpness of those violins because at first it kind of turns the song towards not a darker, as in like, you know, a fire uh, dark, but more of like a nighttime. I mean, I'm just kind of getting this from the song titled Night Rider, kind of a nocturnal vibe to it. Which easily could be, you know, used for some sort of scary musical horror based sound, but it's not doing that. And then at a certain point, the violins themselves do that same motion, but the music turns brighter. It turns towards the day, towards the sun. This is an interesting one. And then you have kind of a western gallop in the snare. There's a little bit of a marching beat on the snare that comes in a little bit later on. The song has a sort of like dusty travel go west young son or whatever it is <laughs> kind of like feel to it then the harmonies arise in the back when that marching drum comes in to me this is an interesting track i like it it kind of abandons like i said some of those pop 
normalities from before, and yet at the same time, it embraces them. May I listen to this a little bit again? Just as dramatic as before. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, I really enjoy the bass playing, especially in the second uh, half of the track. The bass is going to be played on here. Hold on, let me get the bass playing. It's Kelly, I know that, the last name. Kelly Grucut is going to be playing bass here. I really like the way it transforms into more of like a synth bass later on at the very end before that piano re-enters for the final uh, little bits. That's just really cool. That bass playing provides a little bit of flavor that you hear in the previous tracks, but I think it's just a little bit more apparent here. Like production-wise, the strings are definitely like pushed up and the bass is kind of lower in the mix, so it's not as immediately noticeable, but it was immediately noticeable <laughs> near the ending of this track. Like, Kelly's grooving right there. And then right there, the music opens up. It's like it just expands and it's just in full bloom at that moment. The strings are allowed to push. The bass, he does that woom, woom. I don't know exactly what he's doing, but even the sound of the bass changes there. It's just a really nice way of kind of expanding the mind of the music here. And if I come back, so like, this is catchy. And while it's taking perhaps a somewhat conventional rhythm, it's changing it instead of like a typical, I don't know, 4-4, four, four, it's putting it all on the snare there with a little bit of the kick to kind of drive uh, the music here. And speaking of drive, that's what I'm feeling from this music. There's a lot of drive, there's a lot of forward momentum in this particular track. This is a good one. That's interesting. I like that. Uh, let me pull it back up here and it says that this one, uh, let's see. Raymond later revealed on an ELO Facebook fan page that Lynn instructed the backing vocalist to emulate the sounds of the strings on the final verse for a specific sound, saying, On the part where he sings Desolation Degregation Row, listen in the background, you hear string, but it's our voices emulating the string parts. That's kind of interesting. I thought that this was simply genius on Jeff Lynn's part to come up with that. Vocals that emulate string parts. Hmm. I'll have to kind of listen for that again. That's kind of interesting. I didn't really, uh, I can't say I noticed that on my first listen. I'll have to kind of take a look. I don't know exactly what minute that was. Hold on. Hmm. Okay. So it's them going, ha, ha, ha. Oh, switching out the violins and the orchestra for, okay. I did not notice that on my first listen at all, but that is a really cool little switch that, you know, kind of like one of those little hidden facts there. Let's get into these lyrics though. I remember somewhere in the rain, the faces of the passers-by, staring faces, broken blinds. I recall the situation clear. Standing in a crowded car, I can feel the need in me. What is the need? Hold on, night Rider, baby. Hold on, you're a night Rider. Riding the night, searching for what is gone, never reaching the end, so you must travel on. So, someone who's traveling by night, someone who is um, a friend of the dark, not wanting to be seen, not wanting to be in the light, so they remain in the dark, and that is when they move. That is when they travel. And it's, are they hiding from something? He says he remembers seeing the faces of people looking out the window, you know, through the blinds, looking at him. I still see that vision of delight while cruising on the block of night, but she keeps a step ahead, looking out the corner of her world. Nobody ever knows a girl who once lived along this way. I don't know what this one's about. <laughs> Desolation, degradation, row, go on, don't let the feeling show. She's a ten a penny dream. Faces with no name and no address keep staring in on my distress, but she kills me with her smile. So is he being shown kindness or some sort of attention from her while everyone else looks at him with disdain? And so he's searching for her, riding the night, searching for what is gone, never reaching the end, so he must travel on. He's just on this endless search for her. I don't know. That's what I, that's at least what I think, or <laughs> that's at least what I feel from it. Um, yeah, awesome first side, great music. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, let me know below. If you didn't, let me know below. <laughs> you can also subscribe. You can follow me in a bunch of places. Don't forget to like the video before you leave. It definitely helps uh, me out a lot. It helps the channel out a lot. And come back at some point. We'll be uh, listening to side two of the album. I don't know when. We'll listen to it at some point, though. But thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate you showing up. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, guys.